Hey guys, Sausage here. And of course you're Meeple. And welcome to today's AVI. Today, Yay. today we're um, looking at everybody's favourite blue blur hedgehog, Sonic. Fantastic. And we've got like basically 14 uh, fun facts about Sonic the Hedgehog. So we've got 14 interesting, awesome facts. So we thought we'd uh, use this as an opportunity to... Uh, um, make a video on an AVI. Okay, story started with a ball in a tube. Uh, programmer Yuji Nakas <laughs> started small. His prototype for a game featured a simple character rolling through a long tube while inside a life-size ball. He used his version of the game to create an algorithm uh, that would make Sonic's complex motion scheme possible. Uh, before Sega landed on a hedgehog, Sonic was a rabbit. Whoa. Yeah. Um, it says here, Sega was bent on creating a character that would rival the appeal of Nintendo's Mario. Early drafts of the brand's hero envisioned him as a rabbit that could grasp things and fight with prehensile ears. I like that. Yeah. Uh, when Sega recognised that this design would be too technologically difficult to pull off and that having a character who would pick up and throw things would slow down the game's fast pace, the company shifted its sights to a general community of rolling animals that um, could use their bodies as weapons. They, f uh, they wound up with a head-to-head -head battle between Hedgehog <sighs> and Armadillo. <laughs> wow. Nice. Of course, the Hedgehog ultimately won, despite Sega's concerns that most Americans wouldn't have an idea what a Hedgehog was. So it would be Sonic the Armadillo. <laughs> yeah, it would be Sonic the Armadillo. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I like that, although they do actually have, nowadays in Sonic um, history, they actually have an Armadillo character, so they've got the best of both worlds. Um, and his name wasn't always Sonic. No. What? It wasn't. I already Even, knew this. Did you? Yep. Even after Sega settled on the Hedgehog, an idea proposed by uh, designer Yeah Yeah Yeah. The, um, I think that's the pronounced uh, Naoto Oshima. Thank you. Uh, the company tried to uh, uh, tried out a. Uh, a taxon... Oh, flipping. I wonder why I always get the hard. The company words. tried out a taxon... Taxono... Mickley... Confu uh, whatever. Conf that a conf word! A confusing name uh, for a character. Mr. Needle... Mr. Needle How Mouse. Yes, he was known as Mr. Needle Mouse. Uh, but it's not even... A, it's a hard... Mm, uh, Never oh, mind. I see what you mean. Uh, Project Needle Mouse would serve um, as the code name for a later game, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1. The character had some famous influences. A number of pop culture icons were gathered as resources for the character's creation. Oshima borrowed Felix the Cat's head and Mickey Mouse's body for Sonic's base likeness. Uh, Michael Jackson's boots from the bad um, album sleeve inspired Sonic's uh, patented footwear, with Santa Claus's colouring tossed in for a sense of familiarity. Huh. <laughs> so he's a mixture of Felix the Cat, Mickey Mouse, Michael Jackson and Santa Claus. Not only that, but he's also a Sonic that can run fast, sorry, a hedgehog that can run faster than the speed of sound. <sighs> Wow! What would this, this company really put a lot of effort in to make a character, didn't they? Yeah, yeah that's what you do, I guess, if you make a game. <laughs> well, yeah. You gotta, you gotta think out of the box. Right, five. Uh, led an interesting social life. Okay. Um, Sega's staff um, had worked out a hefty backstory for the character most of which was scrapped before release of his debut game. Originally, Sonic was the leader of a rock band cons consisting of a, a parakeet um, oh, who a, was... A, a parakeet. Oh, parakeet. So he was parrot. mistaken as a chicken. Uh, a monkey, a rabbit, a crocodile, as well as a skilled breakdancer. 
Okay. What's more, he was also romantically involved with a woman. Not a female hedgehog, but a human woman named Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Sonic was the leader of a rock band. <laughs> yeah. That featured a parrot, a monkey, a rabbit, a croc, a break dancer, and it was banging a human woman called Madonna. Oh, that is crazy. Oh my god. Uh, pop art was a big influence on the game. Oh god. Uh, Sega cited the work of a Japanese pop artist and illustrator, that name there, as a reference from Sonic's lively colour scheme. Uh, moreover, that name there, Wantanabe, was, uh, sorry, who designed the game's packaging, is quoted in the 1994 book Sega Video Game Illustrator as saying that the company encouraged him to employ a style similar to pop art. So they basically wanted him to look like a pop artist. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, so nothing, no, nothing too fancy. complex there. Yeah, they just wanted to make yeah. him look fancy schmancy. Okay, seven. The game's soundtrack was composed by a big-name Jap Japanese band. Um, in keeping with the spirit of, of the above, Sonic was scored entirely by Japanese pop group Dreams Come True, formed as a trio in 18, 1988. Um, the band went on to provide music for films in, uh, including Sleepless in Seattle and the New Line Cinema Animated The uh, Swan Princess. For the eighth fact, I know I know most of this, but I'll read it out anyway. Sonic's arch enemy went by many names. Oh yes. As yeah, you may know, knows. Sonic's primary nemesis, Dr. Ivo Robotnik, was originally known as Dr. Eggman in Japan. Sega's US and Japanese headquarters could not agree on a universal moniker name, basically. Yeah. Um, American developer Dean Sitton came up with the ro uh, with the Robotnik name for Sonic's central villain, borrowing the forename Ivor from his sister's contemporary boyfriend from Croatia. <laughs> okay, right. so, so his sister's boyfriend who lives in uh, Croatia was a pain in the butt, so he borrowed his name. Okay, other options tossed around for the baddie's handle name was Bad Wrench, Bad Vibes, Bad Year, and Fatty Lo Lobo Lobotnik. <laughs> I'm glad they went for Dr. Robotnik. Yes, I am too. <laughs> now, I could have swore that his name nowadays, I know that people call him Eggman still, but I could have swore his name was Dr. Gerald Robotnik. Oh. Okay, the game might take place on the uh, west coast. The game's official setting is the uh, is the fictional South Island, uh, which may or may not be remote, uh, retro, retroactively located on the likewise fictional planet Mobius, the established home of Sonic and company in the number of franchises, cartoons, and comic series. However, the original game's most iconic level, the Green Hill Zone, was modelled um, after the landscape in California. Number 10. Sonic lived up to his speedy reputation. At the time of Sonic's release, the t titular hero, don't know what that meant, uh, was the fastest moving video game character created. Wow. Ooh. In 2001, Sonic programmer Yuji Naka told Edge magazine Sonic was delivering the kind of high speed no other game was capable of, and the Mega Drive allowed this stunning demonstration of rotation during the bonus stages. This was said to be impossible on the hardware at the time. Aliens! So basically, you, if you remember, you remember when you had the bonus levels and you had those rotating things that yeah, like yeah, the puzzle, yeah, like like a pinball. Yeah, it was similar to that. It was absolutely nightmarish, and I hated them with passion. But apparently, that was impossible to do. But they did it. Uh, but technically, Sonic himself wasn't all that fast, according to the player's manual that accompanied the game. It was Sonic's power sneakers that offered him the renowned speed uh, not any uh, uh, yeah super, uh, not any of his superpowers so basically it's his shoes that are giving him the speed not him being fast himself okay this is something I did know 
But I'm gonna let I'm gonna say this anyway for you because I'm not sure if you know it. Go on. Uh, there are actually two versions of Sonic released. Uh, the variation of Sonic the Hedgehog, most prominently associated with the title, is the popular 16-bit Sega Genesis version. But another yes. version was released as well. An 8-bit game for Genesis's predecessor, predecessor, the Sega Master System. And That's Game right. Gear, Sega's answer to uh, Nintendo's Game Boy. I have actually played that one as well. Yes, I have. I, I, I had it on the Game Gear. It's a uh, technically. I think I still do. It's worlds apart from the one on the the Mega Drive. Oh, definitely. Anyway, yeah. uh, a, a number of minor differences exist between the 16 and 8 bit versions. The 8 bit game uh, sports fewer rings for Sonic to collect, more bodies of water for him to avoid, and level checkpoints that take forms as monitors instead of lamp posts. Additionally, 8-bit special stages differ from the 16-bit ones. More prominently, the 8-bit games lack loops through which Sonic can run, a trademark uh, component of the Sonic franchise. This is shocking me. Uh, Sonic's programmer didn't get along with Sega. Yuji Naka. Yeah, yeah you, uh, Yuji Naka. Yeah, um, became increasingly fed up with his employing company during the process and creating of releasing Sonic the Hedgehog, primarily due to Sega's resistance uh, to giving the game's developers proper credit. Mm. Shortly after Sonic's publica publication, Naka uh, served uh, severe ties with um, uh, Sega's Japanese headquarters to move to America only to find work at the company's stateside office. Right, the final fact. The game includes a hidden message. The most scandalous thing about the message is not in fact what it says, but the way it was embedded into the game. In a confer act of rebellion against Sega's prohibitions of post-game credits, Naka did indeed include a displayed list of the names of all parties responsible for creating Sonic, printing them on the screen that introduced the game. So it introduces the game. Since Naka printed the, the names in black text before a black background, they were effectively invisible and could only be seen via cheat code. <laughs> oh, he's a clever man, he's a clever man. So basically, using the black text, no one could see it. So they are there, the names are there, but you just don't see it. Oh, what a clever man. <laughs> but, uh, so there's just a bunch of facts about Sonic you may or may not have known. Yes, well, that was in, well, it was definitely interesting for me to read out. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it, I mean, obviously I've been a Sonic fan since the dawn of time, so some of those things to learn were actually pretty cool. Well, hopefully next week we could probably have a, a Mario. Uh, yeah, I think it's only fair to do his counterpart. Yeah, so hopefully we'll find some fun facts about Mario next week. Oh, so look forward to that on the next AVI. Yes. Anyway, I have been Sausage. And I have been Meeple. And this has been the AVI on Sonic the Hedgehog. Take care and goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.